Hi everyone, that's Dorota Palitska, international nail artist and educator here. And today we are gonna be playing with my nails, of course. They had to be pink and they had to have some bling. Absolutely amazing Christmassy set. Have a preview of them in here. That's how they look and I get you through the process of creating uh, this amazing design. I hope you really enjoy it. If you do, let me know in the comments below what you think about them. So let's start. Christmas blink and I really wanted to get some pink ones uh, so I have started doing the rebalance on those nails. Uh, there is a video of course of every single set I'm having there is a video of it. Uh, now let's push back the cuticles nice and decent push and then we are going to use the e-file to remove the old design. Oh I almost filed the one which was ready so I'm just filing away the design. And when you do so, like try to remove the excess of the product from the free edge, which is this area here. It will save you so much filing. And then blend everything around the cuticle area. Same on this one. Blend around the cuticle area. And then we are gonna do it with the cuticle bead. So put it back in and just file around the cuticle area. Back into the reverse and do other side. Using the file we are gonna shorten those nails so it's a decent short like decent amount I want to take down usually when my nails are pretty old and they are pretty old uh, like my natural nails are really long underneath I like to shorten them a little bit more uh, just so I can kind of keep the shape nicer. So I can start with the longer shape, uh, longer length and then as I go on I will kind of keep shortening them. Each time when we shorten the nails they become thicker at the free edge so I'm just uh, thinning it out. Blend around the cuticle area. Like make sure there is no um, any product lifting and you cannot see where the gel is starting. Same on this one around the cuticle area and thin it out. Remove the dust and do the inspection. So you want to search for any shiny places and I can see I've got tiny bit in there, I've got tiny bit in there. Actually using the corner of the file is really good for it. I can file a little bit more in here and that's me pretty happy. So clean them in, get rid of that, we are not gonna need it anymore. The rest of the, smi uh, of the filing <laughs> is uh, much simple. And then we are gonna trim my cuticles. So I want to remove everything what is on the nail plate, like you don't want anything in there. That's a decent amount, like I have been neglecting my hands um, for the last few months, like I'm full of cuts and, and everything, so my cuticles are desperately needing done. Sometimes if I take care of them and I apply the cuticle oil, when I'm doing the rebalance, they would be hardly anything to remove and actually just a nail file and a cuticle bead would do the job. Okay, then the blue scrub to dehydrate the nail plate, like make sure it's all nice and clean. And then an extra nail prep. So this will, oh, this one is so squint. Uh, this will really dehydrate our nail plate uh, nicely and get it uh, ready for the universal air bond application. So the universal air bond application acts as our base gel, 
with this different that's difference that you don't have to cure it and this is a huge time saver perfect rose as you guys know this is my favorite one and i don't know i'm just always using it on my nails this is really rare for me to choose a different color uh, but you have asked me about the clear one and i I promise I will do some clear ones on a client as well, uh, especially now when the winter is coming, uh, so you could see it. What I'm doing now is I'm applying a really nice and thin layer through the entire nail, and this is enough product actually around the cuticle area. Like you don't want to have much more in there. So nice and thin layer, and straight away I'm picking up a small scoop to move my apex, because as a nail grows, the apex moves so slightly. Okay, I've got like a big amount of the product in here and then I'm pressing very hard to smooth it out. Do the same in here, so uh, release the product from your brush and then just brush it like smooth it out. Also this is always my tricky corner, so I'm just placing a tiny bit more product in there. Check how they look and yes, that's me happy with it. I can give them a cure, so 60 seconds cure. Okay, when my hand is curing, I'm just closing all the products because you guys don't want to get the dust in there uh, when you start filing and just putting some wipe in here so we can collect all the dust uh, we've got. Using the UV cleanser, we are going to remove the inhibition layer because always uh, some part of the gel doesn't cure. Okay, so just remove that inhibition layer and then let's start shaping them. As usual, I will start with the side holes, so one side nice and straight, other side nice and straight. And I like to thin them out a little bit uh, each time I'm filing. Also, I will check it underneath and I will check a client view. Shorten the free edge, check if it's equal. And usually I like to, this is something which Olivia is struggling with, I like to do this three nails exactly the same length, this one's slightly shorter, and if I'm, I personally prefer it to be either the same length or a tiny bit shorter as well. If you do have a filing technique and you would file each nail exactly the same, uh, they will look more uniform. So I'm doing my filing lines on every nail, then check a client view again, especially that this one is wonky. So I need to file this side more. Okay, once we are happy with that, we can move on into the next step. So our next step is to file around the cuticle area to blend the entire product so you don't know where the product is starting. And this way, like, you could, like oh, you could see it. Uh, my previous nails have been on for probably about four weeks because I never have a time to do them sooner. Sometimes they stay on even longer, but the growth isn't as visible because of the technique I'm using. So file it around the cuticle area. Let me clean all those filing lines. Guys, you can see it. We have file here, there, around the cuticle area. Exactly the same on the other nail. Next step is we want to have our nails nice and even through the entire surface. So I love to thin out my free edge. And then when I'm doing it, I'm looking kind of at my free edge. I want to make sure it's nice and even and I'm looking through it. Do the same on the other nail. Just exactly the same. Okay, again, I want to show you my filing lines. There is a part of the nail which I didn't even touch. This one is squint, like it's really badly squint. So I just need to straighten it up. Each time when you touch the sides, you need to um, thin it out. And sometimes you have to kind of really look through it and work it out what is wrong with the nail before you start filing. Because if you would file just whatever, uh, you would actually make the things worse. You know, try guys, like, um, this is a good exercise. Try to file one nail, like maybe three hours, and you will see it. The longer you file, the actually the worse it will look. So once we have done that, we could leave it and move into the buffer because we don't need to file the area which is nice and perfect. So I'm using a great buffer here now and I'm just filing the entire surface of the nail. Don't forget the nail has those curve in there and you don't want to lose that curve. Also with this buffer I quite often would file my nail fold as well like this because it can really nicely clean it up. Brush away any dust particles from the sides and then the things will look much much cleaner. Okay, do the same on this one. So just file it there. Brush away dust particles. 
and blend everything around the cuticle area. You can see it, the things looks much nicer. I'm still really bothered about this part because uh, it looks a little bit more squint. So once I have done that and inspect the nail, I can just touch up with the file. Just like this, very gentle. And what does the file do is, if you do press it very gentle, it will only remove the parts where you've got excess of the product and wouldn't touch um, any other parts of the nails. And this is already better. We could play a little bit longer, but that's enough fussiness. Like, I, I think I am pretty happy with it. So clean it. Especially that we've got quite a lot of stuff going on. If I would be painting something uh, maybe different, I would be more fussy. Now I've got some air bubble here at the free edge so I had to shorten the, this nail a little bit and again fan out. Check the length, that's okay and tidy up my cuticles the final, the final time. I like to do it always just before I start painting. So just grab my wipe and just inspect them all. It's actually not bad once we put the cuticle oil, just a small touches. Great. Clean it again with the blue scrap. So nice and decent clean and then let's move on into the design. So we are going to use, uh, as you can see, there is a beautiful heart in here. I'm mixing a color. The pink one is a 238. Uh, from the Upvoted collection with my white French gel and usually I try to keep the spot like because I use a lot so these two colors are mixed together and then using my D-liner brush we are gonna start creating the nail art. Actually from the form I can use it as my mixing palette and also all the product we have used today like they are available on our website and we do guys post it internationally so they oh no let me touch that up because it will annoy me. There we are. I will do it slightly different than I've got it in this hand because I like those checked look as well. So here we are gonna do a check look. I'm just using the D liner to quickly paint my smile line. And ideally what I usually do is like, here's my finger uh, finishing. That's where I place the corners of my smile line just place the corners of the smile line there and then do a v-shape first okay once you've got the v-shape i mean it looks nice in the v-shape as well you can just round it off and create a smile line color it in i'm not too fussy about creating a perfect smile line because we will place some glitter in there so i'm really not spending too much time like see this is not straight but that will do uh, we don't need the perfect one okay same in here so this is a corner of my smile line exactly at the same height I will place the second corner of my smile line and then since I know where my v-shape is going I'm straight away painting the smile line but this is just to show you guys how to do it easier Okay, join this in and then color that. You can see also how nice and thin the end is. She says she's not too fussy and then she plays more. Okay, check the client view again. On this finger, as you can see it, I've got some baby boomer here. I didn't bother to make it perfect. So what I did is I just slap on something in here, <laughs> grab the form. Uh, so you can see it, I'm using the one form um, for different things. This one is to remove any fluffy bits and pieces from the sponges, which is quite a big trouble to someone who is just starting the journey with the sponges. And the other part as my mixing palette. So remove the fluff and then we are just gonna do a very quick ombre. Remove the fluff and just keep blending it in. So depending how strong color you want, you would go one or two times. I will have to do two times. Now it's a time for curing. So we are going to cure 30 seconds will do. 
then pick up a drop of the UV cleanser, clean my brush and go into the white gel. Okay, with the white gel we are gonna go for a tiny bit of the check in here. So just like a wee line. And another line. Basically you just do a cross. And then cross on the other needle. Give it a flash cure and then start preparing the next step. So we are going to grab some base gel and base gel is amazing for the crystal applications. I also got lots of crystals in here. Lots of different ones. So I'm just grabbing them here. Never too much crystals, like never ever. <laughs> okay. And then with the base gel, I'm gonna put a scoop on my mixing palette and straight away I will place some large crystal application on those two needles. My gem picker. And I've got some Swarovski crystals, like they are almost like a pearl shape. I love them so much. Um, so we are gonna place one in here and then we are gonna grab some large Swarovski crystals to go on the side of it and then on the other side. Okay, happy with that. Then here we are gonna go more simple. So one crystal and then we've got some beautiful crystal mix, which is called like a parsh moon. Uh, I really love them. So I'm just going to introduce them here as well. So what I'm doing, you can see it, I have placed an excess of the base gel. And here I'm just kind of grabbing this base gel to stick my crystals there. Don't go too close to the cuticle. Okay, happy with that, happy with that. Give it a flash cure, so just a couple seconds of the cure and then we can move on into the next crystals. So the next crystals are the small pearls here. Again, pick up a drop of the base gel and place it here. It's actually, when I start doing it, I thought like, Oh, this actually almost looks like a uh, Christmas tree. Uh, so let's finish it with the star and that's what I did. So here is another crystal. Now, you know, if you look at it that way, it looks like a Christmas tree. <laughs> I would never thought I would wear a Christmas tree on my nail, but uh, this one was like, I actually really like it. And then I've got those Swarovski crystals stars and I just uh, placed one in. Now I like my crystals to be having like a smooth transition. So you can see it, the, the star has an opening. So what I'm doing is I'm sliding this, scar, this, uh, this star inside the small crystal, okay? Uh, so this way the transition in between will be much smoother. Give it a cure. And then grab our uh, sponge again because we need to do this middle finger. So I'm just having my sponge here, a couple seconds longer when it comes to cure. And then you can either use the brush, I'm just gonna dip, go lazy and dip in my product, uh, my, my sponge with the product and make this a little bit more pigmented. Uh, if I would be doing only baby boomer, I would be more precise, like with my blending. Uh, as you can see, this one is a bit messy, uh, but I am not bothered because we are gonna, oh, oh, that's a white one. We are gonna cover it so I'm just kind of getting a little bit of color here. Now I've got some fluff, which I really don't like. Get rid of it before you cure it. And then blend it. Great. Okay, now we have to give it um, another flash cure and grab some small brush to secure our star. So I've got my uh, small brush with the base gel. 
And what we're doing here, you want to place this base gel. It's actually not catchy, but just in case I'm placing a tiny bit of the base gel around the arms of the star. Okay, just around those arms. So when you wash your hairs or when you wear like a jumper or tights, the things are not going to be catchy. But at the same time, you don't have a bulk of the product around it. And then give it a flash cure. Next step, we have to apply some top coat. So I'm just grabbing the high shine wipe top coat and cleaning everything just so we've got a bit more room in here. Swapping things. There we are. And just apply my high shine. Go around the crystals, like give it a shake to it. Like really decent shake. So the top coat is going everywhere. Pull the nail folds down. Now, because we are using quite a large amount of the top coat, I will just flash cure it one nail. Smooth this part out. I actually got maybe something here. So remove it. And then pull the top coat underneath of your star. Okay, check how the light reflects on it, smooth it out and then cure it just a single nail because we've got lots of top coat in there. Okay, once it's freezed a couple seconds, we can apply the top coat on another nails. So I want some top coat here. Again, nice and decent shakes around the crystals so the top coats run in there. Give those shakes. Make sure there is no mess on your nails. So remove this jumper fluff. <laughs> and then smooth it out your top coat application. Okay, straight away I'm going into the middle finger and applying top coat there. Make sure the top coat is applied really, really nice uh, because we are going to use some chrome, so you don't want any dust particles to be visible in there. And then cure it 60 seconds. Okay, and then once it's nicely cooked, we can grab our Aurora chrome. So not the liquid one, but the powder one. And just rub this in. That looks absolutely amazing. I might actually do it here as well. So keep rubbing. And you know, guys, I, am, I have with this nail, uh, by the time I got into recording, I washed my hands, I did the dishes, and it's still taking the chrome, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, the nails have been cured 60 seconds. Perfect. Remove the excess of the pigment. A high shine? A high shine? Uh, yes or no? So, I've got dilemma. I think we should go for sugaring in here. No, we are not going to put the high shine, no. no Patrick said that. Because you did say that. No, I had, I had um, different intention. We will do it on this one. So we will meet in the middle, okay? Some of it will be done the Patrick's way and some of them will be done mine way. So I'm missing something white in here. And I'm just gonna go kind of lazy way and just paint some snowflake here. I mean, not lazy, I like snowflakes. And since this is easier for me to paint with this hand, I will make the snowflake which looks slightly better than the one I've got on my other hand. Because on the other one, I had to go like, really simple. I mean, this one is really easy and simple too. Okay, then grab the D-liner brush and just drag it through it. To be honest, they look already quite nice and 
we could just leave them alone, but I want those um, extra sparkle through them signs. It's a Christmas set. Yay! Couple dots. And now you see it, the baby boomer, like the ombre, the pink ombre, it wasn't perfect, but for the stuff we want to do it, it was just perfect enough. So there is no point to waste your time. Okay, we have to freeze it. So a couple seconds cure, and then we will apply the top coat on the other two nails. Okay, here we are. Is it ready? I'm terrible for undercooking my nails, but let's risk it. So apply the top coat here to cover our chrome pigment. And then apply it there. Pull the nail folds down, make sure you cap those free edge, especially with the chromes, and then cure it 60 seconds. Okay, and now time for the sparkle. So again, on my mixing palette, let me get rid of the sponge and the packaging and grab my mixing palette. I'm gonna place some top coat. You could also mix it with the white gel just to make your life easier. And then look at this beautiful glitter. It's an absolutely amazing. I'm actually gonna place a drop of this white in here. And then let's start painting. Okay, so on this nail, I want to do a glitter smile line. So this is why we didn't have to bother too much about the smile line before, because we are doing it again now. Normally I would just paint it with the top coat, but that will be very hard for you guys to see it. And then create a very small line in here and another two lines there, or maybe one. Sprinkle it. So I'm always uh, like to keep my lid underneath. Sprinkle, I really, I think for my next set, I'm gonna go with the full sugar on the nail, because looks how amazing it looks like when it's a full, uh, full nail, absolutely fantastic. Uh, let's, let's cook it. So I want to just freeze this nail. There we are. And then paint on another nail. Nice and thin. Painting with the top coat is always very difficult. And then do the line in here. And two other lines. One. And two. Sprinkle. Again, freeze it, just because the top coat can be pretty runny. Okay, and then on the last nail, we are gonna go with some wavy look. Make sure your brush is not overload with the product.
Okay, that's me. Happy with it and then sprinkle it. So now because I've got lots of product on my lid, I can just use that. I love this glitter so much. I want feel new. Like I really want this feel new in there. But okay, let's cure it. So 60 seconds cure and then I can show you the final look of it. Okay, when my hand is cooking, I'm just gonna close my products because we need to remove the excess of the glitter, which is actually a shame because it looks so amazing. Okay, so that's my Neil's uh, cook. And I need to show you, like, I actually would love them all. Like, look how it sparkles, it's crazy. It's just amazing, like, absolutely fantastic. Uh, yeah, so what we need to do it is grab the dust brush and just re remove the excess. Um, oh gosh, oh my hand, that's so pretty. Look at my hand, fairy dust. And that's what we have actually created today. Of course, I need to clean and wash my hands, but actually I don't want to get rid of the sparkle. I hope guys, you have really enjoyed watching this tutorial and I'm sending you huge glittery hacks. Bye.